guys, welcome to Zenematics. In today's video, we're going to see how to plan your day for the next 30 days. Only one month is remaining for CIEs and you guys must be really desperate to know how to plan your day. So there are two main components I'm going to break your day into. So let's start with the first idea. So first of all, you have 24 hours in total. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to split your day into halves of 12 hours each. So you're going to visualize your day as two components of 12 hours each. In the first part of 12 hours, we are going to apply five, five, and two rule. So the first five hours will represent your sleep time. Next five hours will represent Regular study time, of course, you're going, not going to study for continuous five hours. You are going to take breaks in between. So this is a rough uh, pointer to like, you know, how much time we want to dedicate to study. And two hours are for your entertainment. So in this time, you can co take a cool down uh, time. You can watch a movie, watch some season uh, and like, you know, have some food. This is uh, your personal time. You can use your social media. And then after this uh, two hours, and then now we come to next five, five, two. So now again, you go for five hours of sleep. There is a common mistake many students do, and I'm going to talk about it. And then two hours of entertainment again. So there's a common mistake that many people do is then after they have taken down a cool, cool down time, for example, for two hours of social media or two hours of uh, movie or any season, they try to study back again. And that is a bad strategy and I'll explain in a moment why. The problem is that while we are studying, the two organs that are mostly working are our eyes and our brain. Now, when we're using our social media or we're using any sort of screen, again, the same two organs are being used. So nothing is at rest that should actually be at rest. So after your entertainment time, cool down time, you should actually take a small nap. I know I've written five over here. Yeah, there is a lot of flexibility in this, uh, in this schedule and you can customize this according to your names. You just have to understand the base idea beneath it that you have to split your day into two smaller days where you're having sleep time, study time, and entertainment time. Now, just have a look at what we have achieved if somebody perfectly, perfectly does this. And that is like you have achieved a total of 10 hours of sleep, 10 hours of study time, and four hours of entertainment. Now, I totally understand that nobody is going to sleep for 10 hours. Of course, they are going to be like, you know, you can sleep five hours and then two to three hours again in another stretch. And nobody is going to study for 10 hours straight. And of course, you're going to take breaks over here as well. And there is going to be an, a very easy transition uh, for uh, people who study for two to three hours, then take 15, 20 minute break, and then take another, uh, you know, uh, study stretch as well. Now. I'm going to help you to plan these 10 hours of study. Because many people say that it's not possible to study for 10 hours. That is mostly because they do not know how to plan to study for 10 hours. They do not have an idea what to do in those 10 hours. So let me help you to plan those 10 hours. Now, we have 10 hours of study. And you're going to use those 10 hours and you're going to use this sleep schedule and you're going to use these 10 hours by the one, two, three, four rule that I always tell my students. So you're going to keep one hour of your study for a revision of notes, for just revising things because when exams are coming nearby, many of us feel that we have started to forget things. We have started to forget the base material for base slipist content of many things. So keep one hour daily to just go through your notes. This is like, you know, the time where your brain is really tired. You don't really want to do anything uh, that is like, you know, brain consuming. So keep that one hour uh, for just revising your notes. Open the notes, just keep a look through them and that's all you need to do. Then for two hours are going to be dedicated to those topics which, so for which you know the syllabus content, but you do not know, uh, you, you have not done practice yet. So you're going to practice for topics that you already know. 
So mostly you're going to practice them topic wise. These are going to be the topics that you know the syllabus content of, but you do not know. Uh, you haven't practiced really much on that. Then you're going to keep three hours daily for those topics which you have not touched at all. Like, you know, for many syllabus, you might have chapters left remaining which you have not touched at all till yet. So you're going to study those chapters plus do topic wise practice for new chapters. For new chapters. Now, this is the third stage. Number four, you're going to keep four dedicated hours for yearly practice of past papers. Now, I'm not talking all of this in context of a single, a single syllabus. You can incorporate four different subjects like this. You can do revision of your strongest subject. Then for the second strongest subject, you can go and do topicals for the syllabus that you already know. For the third strongest subject, you can uh, go and study the topics you have not done yet and then do their practice for three hours. Three hours is a lot of time. You can cover one major topic from its syllabus content to its topic-wise practice. It's a, very, uh, it's a long period of time. Of course, and within these three hours, you don't need, really need to utilize all three hours. You need to split them into one hour and then 10 minutes break and then study for one hour, then 10 minutes break. And you can do that in that manner. Nobody is supposed to study on a stretch of three hours or four hours. For these four hours, you can do past papers and it's very easy to squeeze in at least three past papers over here. For example, if I am a science student, I might do an MC, two MCQ papers from sciences and one maths paper for two hours. So let's suppose this was physics. This was chem, and this is maths. This is just an example, you guys can understand. So this is one hour, this is one hour, and maths paper is two hours. So you would have accomplished a lot. Now imagine, it, now imagine planning your day like this, and once this day ends, you would have covered a lot of syllabus, and you would have covered a lot of practice as well. You might hear a lot of people say, and many people say in the comment section as well, that, oh, 10 hours is superfluous, like, you know, it's not attainable, it's not achievable. But actually it is. The only reason people do not think 10 hours is achievable is that they do not know what to do in those 10 hours. So you're going to follow this 552 routine along with this 1, 2, 3 hour, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 study schedule. This 552 is just a sleeping schedule that you need to follow to maintain a lot of energy for yourself to study. This 1, 2, 3, 4 hour routine basically ensures that you plan your entire day so nicely that you are, you know, supposed to fulfill those slots with maximum efficiency. So I think I have explained this now in a lot more detail than I have done in like, you know, one, one minute or two minute videos because many people were getting confused whether to use 552 rule or 1, 2, 3, 4, or are they related to each other? I think in this video, I have covered in detail what to do. So now you have 30 days from today till your CA exams. I think I have explained in a lot more detail in this video, and I think there are no more confusions on how to spend your day for next 30 days. If you have liked this video, Please share it with all your friends because everybody right now needs to watch this and needs to learn how to plan their day. And if you have any questions now, do leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.